When the extraterrestrials known as the Skrin arrived on Earth in the year 2047, they thought they would encounter little to no resistance from the indigenous population. Assuming that its inhabitants had been culled by the Tiberium that had consumed the planet, extraction should be easy. However, realizing that Tiberium hadn't fully taken over the Earth, and that the human population would try to stop the invaders, the Skrin used an array of weapons and technologies in an attempt to crush the formidable resistance. The most advanced weapon systems in the Skrin's arsenal were their aircraft, and while these vehicles allowed them to establish air superiority over the battlefields of Earth, they still needed boots on the ground, or in this case, legs on the ground, to effectively combat the Global Defense Initiatives and the Brotherhood of Nod's infantry divisions. While GDI and the Brotherhood recruited and trained their infantry from a barracks or Hand of Nod, the Skrin warped in their units through a structure called the Portal. The structure was a simple arch shape, with an active portal in the middle of it. When idle, the portal would sustain itself as a small sphere. When warping in units, the portal would expand within the confines of the arch. These units would be teleported in from Skrid bases established elsewhere in Earth's red zones. Generally speaking, the more complex the unit being teleported, the longer it would take to arrive. For example, a disintegrator squad would arrive faster than a squad of Ravagers. Though admittedly, this could just be a case of game mechanics, rather than a legitimate lore reason. The first, and one of the most frightening of the Skrin's infantry, were the Buzzers. So named for the unnerving sound they make as they approach their target, Buzzers are like a cloud of flying razors. They are guided by a limited sentience, and terrifyingly effective against infantry. Once a target has been spotted, the buzzers immediately swarm it. The phrase, death by a thousand cuts, is quite applicable to how the buzzers dispatch a human. But when faced with a vehicle or structure, the buzzers were practically useless. Any Nod or GDI infantryman attempting to seek shelter inside a garrison will find none, as the buzzers could easily get inside through windows, small holes, or other openings, shredding everyone inside. The buzzers could even hide in the buildings themselves, waiting to ambush unsuspecting humans. Damaged buzzers could even heal themselves within a Tiberium field. Buzzers were often seen swarming around some Skrin vehicles, forming a defensive barrier. These vehicles, or in some cases, creatures, included the Seeker, Devourer Tank, Gunwalker, Corruptor, and Annihilator Tripod. These buzzers would kill any infantry that got too close to the vehicles. These buzzer barriers would only be killed when their host vehicle was destroyed. While most buzzers were warped in through a portal, a swarm of them could be instantly teleported anywhere on the battlefield. The support power could be used by a Skrin foreman to reinforce their forces, or ambush an enemies. Buzzers also originated from a defensive structure called the Buzzer Hive. This hive acted as the Skrin's anti-infantry defensive turret, sending out swarms to deal with any infantry attempting to assault a Skrin base. There was another structure called the Tiberium Hive that seemed to make use of buzzer-like Skrin that functioned exclusively within a Tiberium field. Any units, whether they be human or other Skrin, would be attacked and possibly killed by this swarm, as long as they remained in the infested field. Alternatively, if the hive itself was destroyed, then so too were the buzzers attached to it. The best defense against a buzzer swarm was to identify and kill them before they got within melee range of an infantry squad. This was when the buzzers were most vulnerable, as they could be easily destroyed by ranged weapons. As previously mentioned, buzzers were ineffective against vehicles or structures, unlike other Skrin infantry units, such as the Disintegrators. <coughs> Disintegrators were the Skrin's anti-armor infantry. These metallic, walking creatures were one of the first types encountered by humans. Approximately the size of horses, they had four legs, which allowed them to travel quickly across the battlefield. Their eye was located below a large plasma beam, which was attached to their backs. This beam acted as a cutting torch that could slice through armored vehicles. While a single squad of disintegrators, or descents as they were sometimes called, may not be much of a threat, a pack of them could quickly destroy light and medium armored vehicles. In addition, a descent's plasma beam could slice through infantry with ease. 
Any human tank pilots planning to just crush the descents beneath their treads would have to think twice, as the power cells from the disintegrator's plasma cutters would violently explode, causing damage to the vehicle that crushed them. Descents did suffer from the same weaknesses as the buzzers, though. Their beam was a short-range weapon, so they could be killed before getting within range of the target. Unlike GDIs and the Brotherhood's anti-armor infantry, Descents were unable to attack aircraft, making them highly vulnerable to GDI hammerheads and non-venoms. The Skrin had their own equivalent of human engineers, called Assimilators. These alarming creatures were capable of quickly integrating themselves into mechanical devices and control systems. Because of this, they could easily take control of neutral tech buildings and enemy production facilities to use for their own purposes. The assimilator had eight legs, though it moved quite slowly. It had an articulated tail and a large head, split into two large bony fangs. The assimilator had a couple of tentacles protruding from its body, which seemed to act as the creature's arms. The assimilator was similar to a cephalopod, changing the color and texture of its skin so that it could blend into the surrounding environment. This effectively made it invisible to the naked eye, but only when standing still. If needed, the assimilator could take cover in a nearby civilian building. They could even heal themselves within a Tiberium field, unlike other Skrin infantry, who could only pass through a field unharmed. Assimilators could also quickly repair any damage sustained by Skrin structures, or recruit the husk of a downed tripod or other large vehicle, including GDI's Juggernaut or Nod's Avatar Mechwalkers. While all Skrin forces needed Tiberium for their very existence, some utilized the crystals themselves as weapons. Ravagers were the most well-known of these Skrin units. The creature had four legs and a single glowing eye at its head. Green Tiberium crystals could be seen growing from the Ravager's back. It could launch shards of these crystals at high speeds against hostile ground forces, these shards being quite effective against infantry and light vehicles. Ravagers that were part of the Skrin sect known as Reaper 17 could evolve to carry blue shards, which better penetrated medium and heavy armored vehicles. More importantly, the Ravagers had the ability to agitate the Tiberium carried by vehicles, or contained in structures, causing it to explode. This explosion could cause significant damage or even destroy the vehicle or structure. This ability made Ravagers particularly effective against harvesters, refineries, silos, and Tiberium spikes. The deadliest Skrin infantry were heavily armored beasts as big as an automobile. These shock troopers were so named due to their vicious attacks on heavily populated areas at the start of the Skrin invasion. Like the Ravagers and Disintegrators, these creatures had four legs. They had large, bulbous bodies that seemed to have three, or possibly six, eyes at the head. Their skin appears to partially open up from the middle of their body, and at the top of the trooper's back is their primary beam weapon. Shock troopers were more than capable of attacking armored vehicles head-on using their primary weapon. They could even be outfitted with special upgrades from a structure called the Stasis Chamber, so-called, perhaps, because it was used by the Skrin for hibernation, during their fleet's travel and subsequent idol just outside the solar system. From this chamber, shock troopers could receive blink packs, denoted by the antenna that can be seen protruding out the top of their backs. These packs allow the troopers to blink or teleport a short distance, useful when flanking an enemy force or escaping from a bad engagement. Those shock troopers that were part of the Traveler 59 sect were equipped with these blink packs by default. Additionally, the Shock Trooper could be upgraded with a couple of Plasma Disc Launchers. These Disc Launchers dealt more damage than the Trooper's standard beam weapon, but more importantly, it was capable of bringing down enemy aircraft, making the Troopers an effective anti-air infantry unit. Once a foreman of the Reaper 17 sect had constructed a relay node, they gained access to a special support power called Shock Pods. Similar to the Swarm support power, it could quickly teleport three veteran Shock Trooper squads onto the battlefield as reinforcements. The single most dangerous unit of the Skrin's infantry was the Mastermind. <coughs> this creature had four thin legs supporting its upper body. At its head were three eyes and some tentacles. 
Above the Mastermind's head was its primary weapon, which could launch beams of energy against attacking ground and air forces. Very few of the creatures actually utilized it though, as most preferred to take control of their enemies and turn them against each other. Not only could the Mastermind control the minds of living beings, it could take control of structures too. How they achieved this is not well understood. Perhaps what they were really doing was mind controlling the people inside the building, the same way they could control the crews inside vehicles. Additionally, the Mastermind could teleport friendly squint infantry or vehicles to almost any location across the battlefield. This unique ability could be used to ambush or flank unsuspecting enemies, or help a small screen force escape certain death. Like an assimilator, a mastermind could heal any injuries inside a Tiberium field. Reports of masterminds on the battlefield are scarce, partly because survival rates against these elite screen troopers are grimly low. Sometimes they can be found at the heart of concentrated attack forces. They were considered to be the commandos of the Skrin, though the Reaper 17 sect didn't use any in their arsenal. The first known use of a mastermind occurred in Munich, Germany. A couple of Skrin scout ships were shot down and crashed in the city. The commander of the invasion force, Foreman 371, needed to secure the city and retrieve the ship's data. To that end, Foreman 371 directed a mastermind within the city to disable its formidable defenses. As the Mastermind made its way through the city, it might control GDI units, using them to clear guarded streets and crossroads. The Mastermind arrived next to a GDI barracks and teleported in two Devourer tanks located on the other side of the city. These tanks destroyed the watchtowers protecting the structure. Once destroyed, the Mastermind was able to get close enough to take control of the barracks and recruit a mind-controlled engineer. This engineer made his way to the city's central power generator, shutting it down, and taking the city's sonic defenses offline. Afterwards, a large screen force arrived and destroyed the rest of the GDI forces, securing the city and recovering the data from the downed scout ships. During the assault on one of the screen's threshold towers in Rome, Italy, GDI forces encountered a mastermind. In an effort to drive GDI away from the tower, the Mastermind teleported units from the Skrin side of the chasm to GDI's side. Eliminating this Mastermind proved difficult, as it used its proton beam to quickly cut down any attackers. The creature was eventually killed, stopping most attacks. A combat report by Sergeant Major E. H. Jarvis of the 1st Expeditionary Force regarding the engagement with this Mastermind was filed in the Intelligence Database. Just when we thought that setting up behind the chasm would make us safer, we were proven wrong. The alien mastermind, an enemy commando of sorts, was able to teleport forces across the gap and jeopardize our entire operation. The aliens were able to keep the pressure on with a minimal number of units and crafty use of their stasis chamber and mastermind. We believe the mastermind has more powers than just teleportation, but did not observe any additional capabilities directly. If masterminds are deployed to the battlefield, field commanders should make it a priority to eliminate them ASAP. The amount of mobility the masterminds afford the alien invaders makes them a very high value target. Alien masterminds eliminate the advantage of terrain. They virtually guarantee that no place is safe. The sect of the squared known as Traveler 59 made use of a couple of unique infantry units. The first of these was the Cultist. The truth, the truth is out there. Out. The Cultist was a combination of two lifeforms, a human and the spawn of another one of Traveler 59's units called the Prodigy. The abducted human was completely subservient to the alien spawn attached to their head and back. These Cultists were like less powerful masterminds. They could control the minds of most enemy infantry and vehicle crews, though could not take control of personnel inside buildings. They didn't have the power to teleport friendly units either. They were quite good at turning enemy forces against each other, but if killed, the mind control was immediately broken. Thus, it was better for the cultists to remain away from the front line, or safely garrisoned inside a building while controlling an enemy. As mentioned, the creatures on the cultists' backs were spawns of the Prodigy. The Prodigy was a heavily mutated mastermind, more powerful than the standard one used by other Skrin forces. It had an enlarged head due to its swelled brain, and had thicker legs in order to support the oversized head. One can even see spots of Tiberium between a large crease in the middle of its head. The Prodigy had two blink receptors attached to it, 
which let the creature teleport itself across the battlefield, or escape from hostile forces. It could, of course, teleport other squid units. In addition to mind controlling a single unit or structure, the Prodigy could conduct an area mind control field, which allowed it to control multiple enemy units. This effect couldn't be sustained indefinitely though, and would eventually wear off. Like the Mastermind, the Prodigy could heal itself within a Tiberium field. From the Stasis Chamber, all linked infantry in Traveler's arsenal, except the Prodigy, could be equipped with advanced articulators, which greatly increased their movement speed. Lastly, some of the Squid's infantry units could join or assimilate themselves with an Eradicator Hexapod to provide it with unique weapons. Assimilators gave the Hexapod the ability to heal itself from any sustained damage. Disintegrators provided it with a beam-cutting weapon, useful against armored ground vehicles at close range. Ravagers gave it Tiberium Shard Launchers. Shock Troopers provided the Hexapod with Plasma Disc Launchers, effective as anti-armor and air weapons. And the Mastermind or Prodigy gave the Eradicator a personal teleporter, though it only allowed for short-range teleportation jumps. While Skrin infantry units were able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those of Earth's, it ultimately wasn't enough to overcome the forces of the Global Defense Initiative and Brotherhood of Nod. But if the Overlord of the Skrin were to ever fulfill his promise of another invasion, humanity may find itself going up against more of the Skrin's military forces, including infantry units specially evolved for war.